Dawn breaks in the El Pinacate y Gran Desierto de Altar Biosphere Reserve. Here, the evidence of a violent volcanic past is all around. In this vast, empty land, we still can find the beauty of the world that God gave us. Today, this great place has been recognized for its grandeur, and it is now protected by the Mexican government so we can all witness this wonderful natural creation. This arid land of volcanic origins considered inhospitable by some is where many of the world's toughest, most unusual plants live, and where equally tough animals eke out an existence in an environment of few resources. El Pinacate y Gran Desierto de Altar is situated in extreme northwestern Sonora, Mexico, just north of the Sea of Cortez. This is one of the driest places in North America, receiving only about four inches of rain per year. NASA chose this place to train Apollo 14 astronauts for their moon landing because it was the closest match they could find to the surface of the moon. Intense, extrusive vulcanization began to occur here four million years ago and continued until just two million years ago. These are the natural forces that helped create the landscape that you see here before you today. This area is dotted by 400 volcanic eruption sites. Some of these sites appear as mounds, other appear as mounds with craters, and nearly one dozen are the rare mar craters that have bottoms below the surrounding surface of the land. Here we find the largest active dune fields in North America, some rising to 650 feet. These dunes shift and develop as the local wind patterns change. Perhaps the most notable arid land plant is the saguaro cactus. Groups of saguaros gather on the hillsides as if they were members of small families. Organ pipe cactus bloom at night and are pollinated by a small bat. They produce some of the best tasting cactus fruit of all the cactus in the desert. The Sanita cactus, which is perhaps the most drought tolerant of all cactus in the desert, grows a beard near the top of its columns. It is sometimes referred to as the old man cactus. The barrel cactus huddle together as if to fend off the elements. Even in these harsh conditions, they produce one of the most beautiful flowers in the desert. The many-headed barrel cactus is actually not a barrel cactus. It is a different species. A small tuft of cotton-like fibers often top these cactus which grow in the driest of areas. The hedgehog cactus are among the first of the desert plants to bloom in the spring. The small mammillaria cactus has fish hook-like needles and grow in tightly formed groups. The ocotillo is probably the most common desert shrub in the park. 
It has long, slender branches that are bare most of the year, but in spring they put out brilliant red flowers, and sometimes after a rain the branches are covered with green leaves. Some creatures make their nests in the branches of Choya cactus because these cactus are the spiniest of all cactus in the desert. The ironwood, or palo fierro, is well known for its hard wood. It was used for firewood as well as to make wooden implements. The mesquite was one of the most important food sources for early people. They used the pods. They ground them and turned them into flour. When the pods are red, they are sweet and good tasting. The palo verde is covered with yellow blossoms during the spring. They sometimes lose their small leaves in dry conditions, but they are able to carry out photosynthesis in their green skin. They require no leaves to store the energy from the sun. The elephant tree, or torote, comes from an aromatic family of tropical trees that extend their northern limits here into the park. Moisture is maintained in this plant by a thick viscid fluid that flows through the trunk and the branches. The limber bush, or sangringado, has been used by native people for many years to make baskets. If the bark is damaged, a red blood-like sap will seep out of the wound. Relying upon sparse winter rains, desert wildflowers such as penstemon, brittle bush, and desert mallow brighten up patches of the desert. The creosote bush is recorded as the oldest living plant on earth. One bush has been recorded as living 12,000 years old. This bush has a wonderful smell that fills the desert after a rainstorm. The most valuable resources in the park are the natural water tanks, or tinajas, where animals come to drink. A few of these tinajas hold water all year long, and they are the only available source of water throughout most of the year. Without these tinajas, many animals could not survive. Remote cameras have captured many species coming to drink from these pools in the evening. Perhaps the most famous of all the creatures in the park is the Borrego Cimarron, which is the bighorn sheep, seen here scaling a steep rocky hillside. The endangered Sonoran pronghorn is a very elusive creature in the desert. It is the fastest animal in North America. It can attain speeds of 60 miles per hour. Only about 150 of these animals are found in Sonora and 250 are found in Arizona. Mule deer must constantly be vigilant as they come to drink from a stream that flows for less than a week after an infrequent summer rain. The largest predator in the park is the mountain lion. This cat will lie in wait near water holes and attack animals that come to take a drink. Another cat that lives in the park is the bobcat. These animals take advantage of water courses and vegetated areas to seek out their prey. Coyotes are intelligent, adaptable creatures which can live on saguaro fruit as well as small rodents. They take advantage of open spaces where rodents can more easily be seen and captured. The gray fox finds shade among the rocks and spends the day relaxing. Javelina, which sometimes are referred to as ghosts of the desert, are called that because of their ability to blend into the environment. Javelinas, which may look like pigs, are actually more closely related to deer than to pigs. Jackrabbits circulate blood through their large ears as a way of cooling off their bodies in the summer heat. Round-tailed ground squirrels are one of the more amusing animals in the desert. 
Kangaroo rats are experts at conserving water. They neither sweat nor pant. They spend most of the day underground to stay cool and thereby prevent unnecessary evaporation. Gamble's quails can often be seen in shrub tops, where they scout the surrounding desert looking for the rest of their covey, which consists of about 20 birds. The Gila woodpecker often makes nests in the trunks of saguaros. They dig out the hole and wait for the saguaro to heal the wound before they live in it. Cactus wrens that will forage in the ground for seeds often will make their nests in the thorny branches of the choya or other spiny plants. This prevents predators from being able to get into the nest and steal the newborn chicks. Roadrunners are fast enough to catch and kill rattlesnakes. They can run up to 17 miles per hour. They prefer to run than to fly, but when chased by a predator, they may take to the air and simply fly away. The turkey vulture has a wingspan of up to six feet wide. It feeds on dead animals. Its bald head is less likely to harbor bacteria, and therefore it stays cleaner than a feathered head would. The black vulture, or sopilote, the smaller cousin of the turkey vulture, fly in groups that can take control of dead animals that the turkey vultures feed on. At times, both birds can be seen flying together. The raven has no trouble finding food. Once the saguaro sets its fruit, The red-tailed hawk and the barn owl are two other birds of prey that live in the park. In the spring, hummingbirds will build nests made mostly of small leaves and spider webs. Their long beaks are inserted into tubular flowers where they're able to get sweet, nutritious nectar. The desert tortoise is able to dig underground burrows where it passes the hot days out of the sun. These burrows also protect it from the cold temperatures in winter. It spends 95% of its time underground. Here they can be seen engaging in a mating ritual. The Gila monster is the largest lizard in the park, and they are the only venomous lizard. It is not aggressive and it will only attack if provoked. Like many of the other creatures in the park, the Gila monster will spend the majority of its time underground to protect its body from the heat. The Chuckwalla wedges itself in between rocks and inflates its body in the presence of danger. The horned lizard, which is a lizard and not a toad, burrows underground to hibernate. It feeds mostly on ants and other slow-moving insects. The secret to avoiding a rattlesnake bite is to avoid disturbing stationary snakes and always watching where you're placing your hands and feet in snake country. Temperature is a good indicator of where snakes may be present in greater numbers. So if it is very hot, expect snakes in the shade. If it is cool, expect them in the sun. Rattlesnakes and other reptiles have scales. Scales help prevent reptiles from drying out. It is a myth that snakes are slimy. They have very dry skin. A rattlesnake's skin feels like a smooth, dry piece of leather. Two mildly venomous creatures of the park are the tarantula and the scorpion. The nearby La Provedora rock art site helps us to visualize who the original natives that occupied this land were. The San Dieguito people were the first known inhabitants of this area. They are known for their stone tools. Other peoples that have lived in this region were the Amaragosa group, the Hyacid Adam, or the San people, and the Pima Altos. Today, there still are Tahana Atum that live in the surrounding areas. Oh. 
The El Pinacate is considered a sacred area by the Tohono O'odham. Old inhabited watering and hunting areas have special significance for the O'odham people. For them, the land was their friend, and it needed to be respected because it was the provider of all things. Today, the land still is the provider of all things, although we may not be able to see it as the Tohono O'odham did. Our modern lifestyle obscures the connection between the products we use and where they come from. As the Tahana Autumn knew, man is not in charge of the natural world. He only has a place in it. They knew that living in harmony with nature, with respect for it, was the best thing we could hope to do as people. Today, the Mexican National Park System understands this and they are helping to demonstrate to us how we not only can respect the land, but how we can live in harmony with it. From the mountaintops where the great European explorer Padre Quino made his first maps of the region, down to the saguaro-covered desert plains, and off to the warm Sea of Cortez, exists an enormous, open, and beautiful land that we all can be proud of. El Pinacate y Gran Desierto de Altar, Biosphere Reserve of Sonora, Mexico. I'm going to go